Hello, my name is Naomi and I'm the creator of Two and or Four who makes handmade products for your two-legged loved ones and your four-legged loved ones. Um, today it's part two of a two-part video. Um, in part one, which I will link below, we made a pattern for a hair towel. All right, and um, I will link the video below, but this is what the pattern ended up looking like. All right, I am going to be using microfiber um, fabric. And um, that's what I had made this one, but I had gotten it at Joann's and they no longer seem to um, sell the fabric. So I bought mine at Hobby Lobby and um, I don't know if they still sell it or not because um, I got it a while ago. So my fabric happens to be uh, 60 inches wide. And because my pattern is only 26 inches wide, I'm going to be able to just lay it down uh, with the fabric doubled and cut it out that way. You may not be able to do that if you're using fabric that's only like, you know, 43 to 44 inches wide. You're going to have to do it uh, single or fold if your fabric is not of a... Um, pattern that matters which direction it goes in you may be able to fold it all right so we're going to continue with our hair towel um, my fabric uh, is 60 inches wide um, you're going to need uh, depending on the width of your fabric you're going to need about a yard and a half for the double layered one and a yard for the single layered one. Now you probably need a little less, but um, I never know how they're going to cut the fabric. So I always err on the side of buying a little bit more. All right, I'm going to change the way the... Um, camera is angled and we're going to start cutting out. All right, you're going to need your pattern, your fabric, um, depending on whether you're making a single or a double, you need one and a half yards for a double and one yard for a single. Um, if your fabric is 44, 40, 43, 44, which a lot of fabrics are. Um, my microfiber happens to be 60 inches wide, so I'm going to end up using less. Um, and you need thread, scissors, or a rotary cutter, half inch elastic, somewhere like a yard and a half um, of that and then you need about six inches of one eighth elastic so about a yard and a half of half inch elastic and about six inches of one eighth elastic and then you need one button anywhere between three quarters and um, one inch in diameter and um, I like the shank buttons the shank is the little thing on the bottom because it makes it easier to manipulate the um, loop over the button but that's up to you then either some fabric weights or pins um, and pins or clips for when we get to the sewing part of it. I prefer clips. All right. So I'm going to lay my first, I already have my fabric doubled. All right. And you can cut this out single. So for the 
double layered, you need four of these pieces. So you're going to cut your pattern, same pattern piece, four times. All right. And make sure that you're mirroring. You have two mirrored sets so that um, you don't end up with a wrong side and a right side together. All right. So my fabric is already able to be doubled. So I'm just going to cut this first one double and we'll see what happens. Um, let me get these things out of the way. I got the fabric weights from Joann's. They're Dritz brand. And I only bought them. I waited until they were on sale. And I bought, and that's when I bought them. I'm not paying full price for them. And um, I have an issue with wasting so much fabric. All right. Hold on. All right. So here's my fabric. If I want, I could just lay it down and in, in a single layer. And then here's my selvages. And I'm going to go this way as opposed to this way. All right. And um, you can cut single layer if your fabric's only 44 to 45. Or you can cut double layer. My fabric happens to be 60, so I'm going to be able to do a double layer. Let's see. I'm going to have some fabric left over at the ends. Let's see if that's wide enough. Yes. This is going to be wide enough for me. All right. See how hard this fabric is to cut double layer. All right, I'm going to use a rotary cutter because that's what I like. Right. So if I were only doing a single layer one, and this fabric sheds quite a bit, if I was only doing a single layer one, I'd be done. That's it. I wouldn't have to cut any more out. However, since I am doing a double layered one, I need to cut another set. I will lay my fabric out again. All right, close my 
rotary cutter. Oh, this stuff gets everywhere. All right, so we're going to get started on sewing. Um, I'm going to use my serger, um, but you can use a um, sewing, regular sewing machine. Um, probably you might, you know what, it depends on your fabric. If it's a stretch fabric, I would use a zigzag. If not, I'd go ahead and use a straight stitch. But the first thing I did was I put right sides together of two of the pieces and I put, I like clips. You can use clips or pins. Um, and I did that to both sets. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to serge. So there's an, uh, enough of a seam allowance in this that I want a nice clean edge, so I'm gonna put it right up against the edge of my um, foot plate, and um, I'm going to go ahead and serge. And I'm just going to start gently going around the curve. And I just bring my fabric over and make it curve. Again, as I start getting close to the curve, I start turning my fabric. Right, so I've done one, and now I'm going to do the other one. And part of me, I picked up some of the thread. <sighs> okay, put that there. So this is the double one. If you were doing a single one, your next step would be to put your tails in, and I'll do that in a minute, and then fold under an inch. The easiest way to fold under is if you're gonna do an inch, you mark from the edge two inches, and then you just fold up to that edge. And I will show you that again, shortly. Let's just sew this second panel since I'm making a double.
now that we have both pieces, I am going to tuck in the tails first. Um, this is a personal preference. I do it. Um, there's theory that if you have a cross seam, you don't have to do it, but I like to do it anyway. This way I don't have to worry if I have a cross seam or not. All right. All right, so now I'll show you how I do it. So I take and leave, I don't know, a two, three inch. Then I go in about three quarters of an inch and I put, I have this tool um, called a knit pick and it's by Dritz and I got it at Joann's um, when they were on sale for like 50%. So it cost me under $2. All right, so you put about three quarters of an inch in. I make sure there's a little door. I make sure the little door is, is um, closed and it will automatically open. But if it doesn't, you can just, once you come out at this end, you open it. You wanna make sure it is open. You take your thread, you um, hook it in there, close the little door, and then pull. And your thread comes through. I'll show you again on the other side, on the other one. All right. So once again, I mean, you could trim off some of it. You don't need to try to pull. All right, so again, I put the tool in about three quarters of an inch from the edge. I make sure the door is open, put it on, close the little door, pull it through. Now I'll do the other side. All right, and then I'll trim them off. All right, so I have one of them turned right side out. The other one is still wrong side out, and I'm gonna put it inside so I now have wrong side to wrong side. I'm also gonna take my seams and I'm going to make them go in opposite directions so I don't have as much of a bulk. And right there, I'm gonna put a clip. Right, then I'll go to the narrower end and I'll do the same thing. I will have one of them's turned right side out, the other one's still Wrong side out, I put the one that's wrong side out inside of the one that's right side out. And then I turn my seams in opposite directions. And what I do wanna do is see, okay. So the, Inside one, okay. The inside one is going this way, and I just try to do both ends the same way, just so there's no twisting of the seams. And I'll put a clip there. And then I will put clips to join the edges together. Again, you can use pins if you prefer. So 
So I'm now just going around and clipping the edges together. All right, so now I have, this is the right side and then inside is the right side. So wrong sides are together and I'm going to sew all around the edge together. All right, so I'm gonna put it under here. I will start that way. And what I do is when I put it in, I kind of put it in at an angle and I make sure that what's over here is full on. So that once it starts actually grabbing it, it'll grab the whole thing. There we go. And just adjust as you need. And again, I'm just making sure the fabric stays to the edge here because then I get a nice clean um, edge. It cuts off, there's no looping sticking out. I'm sewing all the way around. I'm not leaving an opening because this is going to serve as my finished edge when I turn under. So I'm getting real close to my edge to um, where I start it. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to start angling it away so that the knife does not cut that part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do there. But once I see it's close to this edge, and probably when it hits, like, right at the beginning of your presser foot, you're going to want to bring this piece away so that the knife doesn't cut it again. You could technically turn off your knife, um, but... All right, I will, however, once again, tuck this edge in. Right. All right. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go mark. I want a one inch casing for my um, three quarter inch elastic or half inch, which whatever you have. And so I'm going to go mark two inches up and then I'm going to fold to that in to that mark two inch mark which will give me a one inch closing all right so I'm on the inside of it because I'm going to be turning it to the inside and I'm going to take two inches for my edge and I'm going to mark and I'm using a pen that I know comes off with heat. All right, so now for this, I'm going to have to use, well, you could use clips. All right. Get some clips, and all I do is I find my mark, and I just fold to it. Just smooth it out and then fold. You need a few more clips around the curves. All right. So now we're going to All right. So let's decide where we're going to put our casing in and I think I'm going to put it in over here so what I'm going to do is in order you need an opening to put the elastic in and I mean honestly you really only need about a three inch opening um, so I'm going to mark over here I'm just going to put a couple of more clips in and that's going to tell me that that's where I'm putting. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start here and go all the way around. 
All right. So I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. I have a 3.6 width and a stitch length of 2.0. Um, I have a 9014 needle on here because this is pretty thick. So um, I don't want it to struggle too much. And um, I'm going to go start where I've marked. And leave my opening to put my elastic in. All right, I'm coming up on the other mark. So I'm going to go ahead, stitch up to there, and then back stitch. On my machine, I can just do a lock stitch, which is what I'm gonna do. And that's it. All right, I have a 30 inch piece of half inch elastic. I'm going to take a safety pin and I'm going to pin the end to where it will be coming out of the casing. And then I have a bodkin To help me feed it through and what I'm going to try to do is make sure I start off with it not twisted All right, so I've had it come out at the other end. I'm gonna grab it and hold it and then pull. Now I may decide 30 inches is too long, but that's what I started with just to give me um, some leeway. Then I'll take that pin, that safety pin, I'll open it up and I'm going to take the bodkin off the other end and I'm going to grab the two ends and I'm going to put my pin through 
but I'm also going to put it through the fabric because what I'm going to try to do is adjust the elastic and see if that's the size I want. So there we go. And it's kind of looking right for me. So what I'm going to do is, let's see. Yep, okay. Thirty inches looks about right for this size. So I am going to go first. I'm going to take my pin, my safety pin out. I'm going to put the two ends one on top of the other so that they overlap about an inch. And then I'll just grab a pin for the moment. And you can pull this out a little to give you some room to work with. And I'm going to pin it. And then I'm going to go sew it on both edges back and forth a few times. So all I did was I sewed back and forth on one end. Now I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna do this end. All right. All right. And now I'm just going to pull and rearrange this so that it brings that end in, and then I'm gonna close the hole. So I'm gonna close up this hole. to my lock stitch. And 
do another lock stitch at the end or back stitch. And that's it. And if you want yours tighter, you just make the elastic smaller. So I have a five inch piece of one eighth inch elastic, but you could use quarter. And all I'm doing is at the narrower end, I'm not gonna do it on the seam because that's just too much bulk to try to get through, but I put my two ends together like this and I'm going to put it to one side of the seam about a half inch away from the seam and that's at the sh at the shorter curve then I'm gonna put it on there And I have it over my seam by, I don't know, a half inch. Because that'll still give me enough loop. And then I'm going to sew that down. And I'm going to sew it several times. Now you probably could do this before you do the casing. Um... But honestly, I just didn't remember about it. I think the next one I'm going to use different color thread so you can see it better. All right. So you have the loop facing on the inside. Okay. Take my pin out. I'm going in reverse because my machine does it. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting it at the edge. I want to make sure I don't grab the inside elastic. I will do a lock stitch. All right, so you end up with a loop on the inside. And that will be what you will take and grab the button that you're gonna put on the top. And we will do that next. All right, I have a needle and thread And the wrong glasses on. Okay, 
to knot the end. I just make sure my two ends are close. I hold on to it in between my index and my thumb and I bring it around like twice and then I just push it off and pull. And if I end up with a little loop on the bottom, which I did on this one. I just cut off some of it. All right, so about four inches in on the bigger curve one. So four inches from the edge, you're gonna put your button three-quarter inch or one inch button. I happen to have a one inch one and I'm going to use it. And I'm just going in like right next to the center seam, possibly even on the center seam. Come up and go through the loop of the button and bring it back down. And I went at an angle, so I'm going to fix that. This fabric catches on every loop in here. All right. Bring it back down in the center. through the loop and then back down. I'm coming up, going through the button loop, and then I'll go back down. Let's do it probably about six to 10 times.
Okay, on this last one, what I'm going to do is before I go back down, I'm going to go one, two, three, four around. And then I'm going to go back down. All right, now I'm going to tie it off. Basically, I go under several of the stitches, make a small loop, put my needle back through. It's a little harder because the, the loops of the fabric catch. Okay. So I just make my loop really small by pulling the thread. Make this one really small before I go through. I pull that one really tight. And I'll go through and then one last time. And then I'll go through somewhere else and do the same process. And that's it. And then I'll cut it. So then when you put it on, if you want, you can make your elastic a little longer. If you want to be able to put your button a little more forward, um, you know, you kind of have to find what works for you. And there you have it. Now this is pretty thick, um, so it should be super absorbent. So here is the finished product. I think in my next pattern re, um, revision, I'm going to round the top part a little bit more, and that just means I'll use a bigger circle, um, something maybe with a six inch circumference. Um, but if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I would really love for you to subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, after I say goodbye, there's going to be a short clip on how you actually put this on your head. So if you want to stay tuned for that, that would be great. Um, so here's the finished product. I put a little button that I had, a one inch. Um, I might even go and make the loop uh, six inches of elastic to give me a little bit more um, but you can decide how wide or how um, tight you want by using more a little more or a little less of the elastic inside at some point I will do a video doing the single layer because this is pretty thick um, but for now this is it. Thank you. All right. So basically it has a button here and then some thin elastic on the other end. And you take it and you put it on your head, the bigger end. And for me, I just 
bunch up my hair and stick it inside. And then I find the elastic, which is the hard part. And then I just take it, push it back, and then take the elastic and you can twist it and then just hook it on. And that's it. And I like to take it with me. I have, I'll show you, I have a single um, one that I take with me on vacation, you know, and when I trap, when I travel, and I just throw it in my bag because it takes really virtually no room. And this way, if I forget to ask for extra towels, which I never remember, and I only remember when I'm getting out of the shower and my hair is already wet. And that's it. And then it just comes right off. And you can just unbutton it.